one word to describe the class of 2021. A class that survived a pandemic and thrived and created wonderful artwork despite all that. That word is resilient. 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 One word to describe the class of 2021. Determined. Tenacious. Educators. Warriors. Fantastic. Powerful. Amazing. One word to describe the senior class of 2021. Intrepid. One really valuable lesson that I learned from my early career opportunities was that careers are a marathon, not a sprint. The lesson I learned was to get out of my comfort zone, to move to a new city if necessary, take advantage of every opportunity, collaborate with others, and make an effort to meet new people. There are a lot of nice people out there. I realized I needed to create artwork for myself. I needed to continue to create and push myself on a daily basis. Cast your net wide. Go for the best job available, even if it means relocating far away. Find your people. You may even want to look outside of art and design and sincerely engage with other conversations that matter to you. Make connections and make friends quickly. Do not isolate yourself from others. Build a community. Never say no to an opportunity. You are a creator, so be ready to create your own path if what you are looking for is not out there yet. One valuable lesson that I've learned in my career is to be courageous and don't be afraid to fail. Say yes to everything. Technology is always changing. The fields that we work in are constantly evolving and you will do yourself a big favor by saying yes to opportunities and challenges as they arise because it means that you'll be one step ahead everywhere you go after that. Don't live life by default. Be intentional about the work you do, about the place you live, about the people you spend your time with. Believe in yourself. Don't be afraid to take risks and try again if you don't succeed. You won't be in school any longer, but you still are an artist and artists work. The most important thing I think you can take away from your more education is your ability to learn and adapt and to carry the creative spirit you've cultivated here throughout your life, both professionally as well as personally. That you are ready you are prepared, you have gone through the fire, and you are now tested. You are ready to begin your careers. Have faith in yourself. After school, it's really an opportunity to shape your own art and design world and participate in society. It's the capacity that you have developed to work hard. It will serve you well. Regardless of what tools that you use in your trade later on, the skills that are going to be most important are how you apply them. So your time management, delegation, asking directions, but being self-directed, being exploratory, being creative. Those are the things that will, you know, launch you forward in your career, in your life. The most important thing to take away from your education at Moore is your network, the friends, faculty and staff who supported you on your journey. The students have built a strong internal community that they take out into the world and it will serve them very well. They are able to do anything, anything they set their mind to. Absolutely maintain those relationships, share information, share jobs, um, stay in touch. Because this is your first professional network. The faculty who have mentored you along the way, your peers and your friends who have cheered you on, they will always be there and they will be the ones who will help connect you to others, who will provide you with opportunities and open doors and who will be there to offer support and guidance when you need it most. And you'll only grow your community from there. This is just the first step. I want you to remember more the good times, the hard work, everything that you earned. Congratulations, you did it and best of luck with your next steps. Congratulations. 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 Congrats on graduating. Congratulations to the class of 2021. Congratulations. 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 Congratulations, class of 2021. Congrats to the class of 2021. It's been my honor and privilege to work with you all. Congratulations to a very special group. Wishing a heartfelt congratulations to the class of 2021. 
Congratulations, class of 2021. I'm so proud of you. Big congrats to everyone in the class of 2021. We are so proud of you. Congratulations, class of 2021. You did it. And I look forward to you doing great things in the future. Congratulations, you got this. Welcome to Moore College of Art and Design's 172nd commencement to celebrate the class of 2021. Congratulations to all of the class and to all of the graduates who have earned their degrees. And of course, to all of the families and their friends who join us today from near and far. I want to recognize our honored guests and recipients of an honorary doctorate from Moore College of Art and Design, Alicia Grouillon and Seville Agman, who will be introduced later in the program. And I want to thank the members of the Board of Managers and Trustees for their stewardship of this wonderful institution. What a happy day. As graduates, all of you are crossing the threshold of the future into a world that is more visual than ever. Here is what you are carrying over that doorstep. Experience and knowledge that you will draw from to create. The capacity to keep learning. An artistic ability we find. And more intrinsically, you carry your confidence, your power, and your network. Most of all, you carry your resilience. As graduates in this uncertain time, you have navigated new ways of working and learning with grace and determination. You've sacrificed and the full experience of part of your final year with us to aid the greater good and look out for one another. And for that, we are very grateful to you. I cannot emphasize enough what an accomplishment it is for you to complete your studies under such extraordinary circumstances. And for that, you deserve double the congratulations. As intellectual, artist, teacher, curator, designer, and entrepreneur, you walk toward your next step, supported by this institution and with a competitive advantage. You are expert in solving problems creatively, and you have the capacity to accept criticism and to learn from it. You are entering a society 
that has a heightened embrace of what you do, of who you are. More than ever, we are in a visual world where there is a need for the capacity to create. And you are poised to combine the savvy and self-confidence you gained at more to take your place in the world. Graduation is not just walking across a stage. It is the culmination of a serious endeavor, the fulfillment of a contract between you as students and this institution. Your degree is earned. So be proud of your accomplishments. That is why it is called commencement, because it is a beginning as well as an end. We honor each of you today because you did the work, to paraphrase President John F. Kennedy, not because it was easy, but because it was hard. In many ways, your achievement today exemplifies the power of art to transform. And that you have done, and I suspect will continue to do. I want to offer you an illuminating message to carry with you as you begin your journey into the future. While the statement was not intended as a compliment, it can be construed as one. Nevertheless, she persisted. The art, this articulation of the notion of persistence is something I want you to carry with you forever. Persistence is determination in action. It is the, some would say, tenacious commitment to making an idea happen. It will come in all shapes and sizes in your lifetime. It will mean going to the studio, even if you don't want to, making that phone call, though you'd rather send a text, dragging yourself to a friend's opening because you need to support them, talking to a colleague that you don't know because you have to further your network. Persistence is subjugating what you don't want to do in the interest of doing what you need to do. You have already exhibited this quality by finishing your work and earning your degree in a pandemic. You ex exhibit persistence because it is right, because it will help, because deep down, you know you should. It can involve a normal imperative, something morally driven, or an act of bravery, or it can be motivated by benign self-interest. Your talent and intellect will only get you so far. Persistence will take you the rest of the way. In addition to everything you have gained from your time at this college, please remember Never give up in achieving your goals. Go around, confront the barriers, continue to climb over the roadblocks ahead and have confidence and security in the knowledge that you are a more graduate and that you can do anything you set your mind to. The other tool I invite you to place in your portfolio is gratitude. Not as a noun, but as a verb, something you do. In recognizing that many people along your journey will assist you, even if it may appear that all they're doing is challenging you. This awareness is key to your ability to face adversity and embrace opportunity. Taking stock of the good things pushes you to recognize the possibilities. Practice 
persistence and gratitude. They won't let you down. I wish you the very best in your journey. You will always be part of the Moore community. Congratulations again to the class of 2021. Thank you. Moore College of Art and Design is a private institution with a public purpose. It is governed by a board of trustees and managers that ensure we are financially and educationally sound. I would like to acknowledge Chair of the Board of Trustees, Francis Graham, 1966, and Chair of the Board of Managers, Arthur Block, as well as the numerous members from our boards who have joined us today and to thank all of them for their stewardship, their investment of time, talent and resources, generate scholarships, guide us in our strategic thinking and connect us to the world of the arts and business. It takes many people to keep the college going, process the records, generate scholarships, and attend to the well-being of the students. I would like to acknowledge the hardworking staff and to thank them. And if we were together, I would have them stand. Please join me in thank, giving thanks to our staff. The most important work of this college happens in the classroom and the studio. We are grateful to the faculty whose hard work, strong investment in the students and reputation as artists and scholars strengthen the institution. Our graduates consistently cite their relationships with their professors as being one of the most valuable parts of their experience at Moore. Please join me in a heartfelt thanks to our incredible faculty. And lastly, graduates, there are people at this commencement who have made your journey possible through their love, their support, and their commitment to your studies and to you. I would like now to ask you to turn around from the screen and to give them your thanks to your family and to your friends for their love and their loyalty. Thank you, families. Thank you. Now, it is time to honor our students. Representative to the Board of Managers, I will now introduce the newest one. Every year, the college elects a representative from the graduating class to serve on the Board of Managers. Students are nominated by faculty and administration and must submit a resume, write an essay about how they might serve as a class representative to the Board of Managers, and then be interviewed by members of the Board Leadership Committee. This year it was a very difficult decision. This year's representative is art education major, Kendall Boyd. Congratulations, Kendall, we're very proud of you. And now, a video message from our valedictorian, Krista Foss, and Happy Fernandez Leadership Prize winner, Kendall Boyd. Good morning, everyone. My name is Krista Foss, and I'd like to thank students, friends, family, 
and everybody took the time out of their daily routine to be here with us on such an important day. Before I start speaking, I'd like to take a moment to acknowledge a student who left the mark on our school for years to come. Bianca Consul was a bright, beautiful young woman who created with her heart and advocated with her all. Her presence impacted many of the students graduating with us today, and her light will resonate through all of us as we keep creating and producing for ourselves and the world around us. The time we live in at this very moment drives us to produce, to produce art, film, friends, relationships. We nurture our ideas until they reach full maturity and creation, and then we send them off to be received and pondered and taken in by all. And as we progress throughout our time here at Moore, we've nurtured our future selves and to sit behind our laptops and case in a Zoom rectangular frame. We are sending ourselves off in a way, just like the ideas and concepts cultivated during our time as students. And as we gather here today, wishing each other farewell and see you next time, do not remain stagnant. Do not sit in fear of what the future holds just because of uncertainty, because at times, uncertainty can be exciting. It brings on the potential for something great, and nobody should miss out on the moment where they become the person that they truly want to be. There are many times where I've been talking with friends of mine about what might be, what could be, and we become overwhelmed because we don't know what we want to do with ourselves just yet. We would sit and wallow in existential dread, but... As I look back at those moments, I shake my head and say that I don't think I've reached my peak yet, per se. But we, as an academic class, are looking up at that peak right now. Moore has allowed each and every one of us to take a running start at our careers as creatives. We are becoming the people we strive to be every day, and even if you are unsure about life and its foreign concepts, you are becoming regardless. And with all that being said, I leave you with this. Create with purpose and heart, advocate for all, and send yourself off with love and positive intent. Why? Because after everything, don't you think you deserve it? Congratulations, class of 2021. We did it! Throughout my four years at Moore, I learned that leadership is not just about having a title or certain power. A leader is not always the president of an organization, but rather someone who rises by lifting others. A leader doesn't only make decisions to suit their own interests, but in consideration of others especially those that do not have as much agency. The pursuit of a college education is not just about continued formal education and training beyond secondary school, but about coming into who you are. It's about learning from your classmates and those around you, broadening your horizons and stepping out of your comfort zone. Growth and change are not possible without first challenging yourself. Perfection is not a rational or realistic feat, and our accomplishments, titles, and distinctions mean very little without first taking that step. That is what truly matters at the end of the day. As students, we are sometimes blinded by the hardships and obstacles we face. And at times it can feel like our voices and contributions to our community do not amount to much. It sometimes feels easier to reflect on our failures. But I want each and every one of you right now to take a moment and think. Think of all the positive change that has happened over your more career. Whether the thing that you think about is something you consider to be small or grand, Consider that your very presence here, every time that you spoke up, advocated for yourself and or others, or banded together with your friends and classmates, you were contributing to a positive change that has impacted and changed more for years to come. More is already so much different than it was the day that we each first stepped foot onto campus. This was the work that was done by all of us together, and we have all contributed in our own ways. The obstacles I have overcome at Moore have set me up for a lifetime of commitment to the work of bettering myself in the communities that surround me. I cherish those difficult moments for teaching me and molding me into the person that I am today. I am most proud, however, of many of you, my classmates, who upon entering Moore did not feel much like leaders, but together have grown into more open-minded, committed, and involved change makers. More graduates are resilient. Our experiences here have shaped us and we have done the work of unlearning, shedding and relearning to become the butterflies that we all are today. Congratulations class of 2021 and long live the leader in each and every one of you. Thank you, Krista and Kendall. Those were wonderful, inspiring words. This year was the sixth year of operations of the Faculty Forum. 
a representative body of faculty members who work hard to support the teaching and learning mission of the college and to facilitate faculty participation in college-wide shared governance. It is my pleasure to welcome faculty forum president and assistant professor of art education, Amanda Numagavri, to deliver greetings from the faculty. Amanda? Thank you, President Fitzgibbon. On behalf of my distinguished colleagues, the faculty, it is my pleasure to congratulate you on achieving this remarkable goal. We are here today to celebrate you and all those people who supported you along the way. As I thought about where to begin my remarks today, I had no choice but to reflect on how this year was truly a lesson in dedication, endurance, patience, and innovation. I read through Jim Johnson's faculty forum remarks from last year's graduation and realized how true they were when he said, when we first gathered in our classrooms at the beginning of this semester, meaning spring 2020, no one could have predicted that we'd be honoring you today through a series of interconnected cameras and screens. Well, Jim, you called it. No one could have predicted this year's outcome either, but we were all successful in achieving it. When I talked to my colleagues about their experiences this term, they all use the word resilient to describe their students. I start to think, how does one assess resilience as a skill? I am an art educator after all, you have to think about assessment. How might one assess ways in which our students have mastered the skill of resiliency? We can all agree that resiliency, especially in a career in art and design is mission critical skill. And we as faculty all agree that you have in fact mastered it. But how do we define, how do we as faculty define learn, uh, our resilient learners? By building a rubric, of course, insert eye rolls for more of a few of my colleagues, and define some key sub skills that can be clearly evidenced in resilience. So here we go. Here are some accessible criteria in sequential order, of course, to demonstrate the scaffolding of skills. We faculty are confident that you meet these criteria to their fullest. So let's make this assessment a group participation. Please audience, feel free to drop empowering words into the chat to show love and support for all of the amazing skills that our graduates have had to demonstrate during their time at Moore. So help us build our resiliency rubric. Here are four criteria that we as faculty have identified. Dedication. Dedication is the willingness to give a lot of time or energy and energy towards something because it is important. Endurance, the ability to do something for long periods of time. Patience, the ability to keep doing something despite difficulties. We've had our few this year for sure. And innovation, the development of new ideas and designs. So here's to the class of 2021, we had, who had exemplary demonstration of the essential skill, resilience. You willingly joined us as partners in hybrid and virtual learning environments, and you worked tirelessly, persisting through challenges of all origins. In the end though, you all pushed through the boundaries of this academic year, this pandemic, to achieve true innovation and success. We are so proud of you and please stay in touch. We love hearing where your future takes you. Once again, congratulations on this exceptional achievement. And now back to President Fitzgibbon. Thank you, Amanda. Your leadership of the forum has been exemplary and we are all grateful for it. It's my great pleasure to be able to introduce to you this year's first honorary degree recipient and guest speaker, Alicia Gourion. Alicia Gourion is a multidisciplinary artist who uses video, photography, social sculpture, and performance to bring attention to issues like immigration, climate change, and racial and economic disparities. A New York native, Gourion's ongoing embodied research 
focuses on activating public spaces to prioritize healing and archiving oral history in order to disrupt historical patterns that undermine the health and civic participation of BIPOC peoples. She has completed a residency at New York University's Hemispheric Institute for Politics and Performance, and her work has been shown in numerous group exhibitions, including the Eighth Floor, Bronx Museum of the Arts, BRIC House for Arts and Media, School of Visual Arts, El Museo del Barrio, Columbia University, Socrates Sculpture Park, Performa 11, Old Stone House, and Art in Odd Places. She is an adjunct at the School of Visual Arts and the City University of New York, and her scholarly work includes several published chapters about the social value of art. Guillaume is the 2020 recipient of the Jane and Davis Woodlentis Endowed Fellowship at Moore College of Art and Design. Alicia, you are truly an inspiration and a great role model for our graduates. It is an honor and joy to have you with us today. By virtue of the authority delegated to me, I hereby confer upon you, Alicia Guillon, the our honorary degree of Doctor of Fine Arts and declare that your name is to be forever on the college's roll of honorary members. Congratulations. I want to I want to send a, a heartfelt thank you to President Fitzgibbon um, and Dean Phillips, the Board of Trustees and Managers for this honorary doctorate degree. And I would also like to thank the Walentis family for selecting me for the Walentis Fellowship, which is an extraordinary opportunity that came at exactly the right time, <laughs> and I'm so very grateful for it. I want to thank the incredible more students I had this time. The, the privilege to have spent time with this last semester and the generosity of faculty and staff um, for making me feel at home at more, even if from a distance through Zooms. And congratulations to all the graduates, congratulations to, to all the students at Moore and their families for getting through this time. You are amazing and, and you're stronger for it. And what an incredible honor it is to receive this degree from a college whose history has been dedicated to the art education of women. It makes it that much more important and significant to be given this award. If my mother were alive, she would have been absolutely ecstatic. It's, it's one of the ultimate dreams immigrants have for their children. Um, and if this were to have been a live in-person ceremony, I would have been obligated to send her endless photos dressed in the regalia. So thinking of her puts in perspective receiving this honor as well as the word honor. I feel there's a whole speech in the word alone. As a noun, it's defined as an adherence to what is right or to a conventional standard of conduct. To regard with great respect to fulfill an obligation, to keep an agreement. For me, as a child of immigrants, there is an extra weight to this moment. You see, I became an artist against my parents' wishes. They felt they wanted something more for me, something more secure. They didn't want me to struggle. You see, my parents left their country due to a dictatorship and subsequent U.S. invasion, thus leaving their families behind. My father is an industrial engineer by training and ended up providing for us through his bodega business. And I recently asked him if he had missed pursuing his career 
And he somewhat shrugged it off, you know, and, and said that sometimes you have to do what you need to do to survive and take care of your family. And I didn't think too much of it, but then realized that he arrived to the US in 1964, shortly before the signing of the Civil Rights Act. And so I, I felt and drew the conclusion that racism and language discrimination probably played a role um, in his not being able to pursue his passion. As for my mother, uh, taking care of us took precedence her unpaid domestic labor was something we kids often took for granted. She had dreams of becoming a nurse and would have been brilliant at it. Her unpaid work organizing our local community in Northern Manhattan and then the Bronx on issues related to language access and food justice is how I learned to organize. And what I remember most vividly were the people coming to our home and all the food and conversations that would take place as they planned to help others in need. The feeling of hope and gratitude was magnetic. My parents, far from home, made one in New York with honor. They understood the obligation they had to their communities, to their children and their families. Yesterday, I attended a uh, Strike MoMA. And for those of you who don't know what it is, it's, it's been a 10 week uh, strike held every Friday outside the Museum of Modern Art. And it's a strike led by artists and cultural workers around creating something else that can emerge out of the museum, something under the control of workers and communities and artists rather than billionaires. Yesterday, there were guests representing groups speaking out against resource extraction and pollution taking place in third world countries and here by multinational corporations who are led by some of the museum board members. They highlighted the interconnected struggles between communities and people all around the world. And one group mentioned Barrick Mining Company who is actively extracting gold from the Dominican Republic where my family's from and polluting the river Osama. Poor people in the surrounding towns are left to ration three liters of clean water a day. I felt that it was my obligation in some way to be present as I straddle multiple communities that have equally shaped me. And being there was risky as a working artist, but the community of artists and scholars gathered together was nourishing. While I was there, I saw a friend that I had not seen since the pandemic started. And we chatted and caught up and she mentioned her job and how much she has grown to dislike it. It had become taxing. It had become almost unbearable with little support for workers, little compensation and mounting work. She didn't want to quit now, of course, because of the precarity of the economy. She expressed trepidation at searching for managerial positions because she had not finished her bachelor's degree due to student debt. She said she wanted to finish. She said she wanted to become a nurse. She said that she'd even study in another country to make it happen. She said her former college would not release her transcripts. We exchanged ideas about what she could do. And I extended my support and mentioned looking at schools that have programs and funding for non-traditional aged women students seeking to finish their bachelor's degree. We said we would keep in touch and I doubly promised my support to help her finish. By the end of our conversation, the obligation of holding today's honor increased. And I was reminded of a TEDx talk given by Guillermo Gomez Peña, where he talks about the value and unspoken obligations some artists take on um, in their work and in our society. And I'll quote a little bit of that. So in the name of art, people have created fake corporations to denounce environmental injustices and printed false passports to invent their own countries. In the name of art, people invent architecture that is more congruent with our needs and aspirations. In my world, there is food, housing, and education for everyone. In my world, there are no illegal aliens, no others, no good or bad guys. In my world, there are no guns because there's no fear. 
In my world, there is a place for everyone, even if for the duration of a talk. In my world, people solve their disagreements through performance rituals, dance, and psychomagic actions. In my world, the laws of poetry and quantum physics rule everyday life, and all TV stations are run by artists and poets. The fact is, we do art because we love it, and doing good with it is an effect we welcome. He goes on to say that he thinks that democracy cannot thrive without art. He says that he thinks democracy cannot thrive without the critical voice of the artist constantly testing its limits and possibilities. He thinks that democracy cannot exist without the ethical mirror of art reflecting the distorted features of power. He asks us if we followed the logic or his logic because it obviously wasn't being lived out here in the US. It's not listening to artists and intellectuals, he said. We could have a better world. I became an artist because I wanted to make my sense of the world around me or make sense of the world around me. I wanted to feel independent and be in spaces where I could critically look at it. Sitting in a cubicle didn't feel right. And I feel looking back now that probably due to structural racism and sexism in education, I, I, I didn't think I would make a really good doctor or lawyer. I became an artist to listen and be witness, to highlight inconsistencies in order to make the world more just, to draw a connection to what makes us really human, not what we have been taught to consider as human. I became an artist to let go of what I thought I had to do to be successful and make my own path. I became an artist for the ability to dream. So why, why am I sharing all this? Honestly, I have never had the opportunity to give a graduation speech. And it being such an important day for you all, I want to encourage you to assure you and let you know it will work out you will, you will be okay. You've made the right decision and this path will be an exciting part of an exciting life ahead. Even if you end up doing something else, it will make sense once you get there, really, honestly. There's honor in the journey of finding out. There's honor in the process of trial and error. There's honor in helping others. There's honor in doing what you need to do in order to take care of your family. There's honor in dreaming and imagining a better world. There is honor in speaking out for justice. Remember your honor, define it, and carry it in everything you do. Thank you and congratulations. Thank you, Alicia. We are honored, truly honored, to have you share those thoughts with us. It is my great pleasure to be able to introduce to you this year's other honorary degree recipient and guest speaker, Sabil Hagman. Sabil Hagman is a professor of graphic design at the University of Houston School of Art and an entrepreneur who founded her Houston-based design studio Contour in 2000. She works for clients such as the CORE core program of the Museum of Fine Arts in Houston, Dallas Museum of Art, and the Fisher Gallery of the University of Southern California, USC Los Angeles, among others. Before relocating to uh, Houston, she was the art director of the USC School of Architecture and taught at several Southern California institutions. In 1999, she completed the typeface Choila, originally commissioned by Art Center College of Design and released by the Digital Type Foundry engine in the same year. Her work has been featured in several publications and recognized by the Type Directors Club of New York. Recently, 
Moore College of Art and Design adopted her original typeface, Util, and it's in our brand redesign, which you see behind me. Sabille, it is an honor and joy to have you with us today. By virtue of the authority delegated to me, I hereby confer upon you, Sabille Hogman, the honorary degree of Doctor of Fine Arts and declare that your name is to be forever on the college's role of honorary members. Congratulations. Good morning, everyone. Thank you for the introduction and thank you, President Fitzgibbon and the Honorary Degree Selection Committee for naming me a candidate for receiving an honorary degree from Moore College of Art and Design. I'm deeply honored and very excited to become a member of the Moore's community. In 2007, I put away the October Newsweek magazine issue whose content focused on women and power. The texts gave prominence to oral history essays by a number of women with various and diverse backgrounds. They hold leadership positions and aspire to big dreams. When reading this report in 07, I was moved and inspired as I could identify with facing obstacles and fears on the path to overcoming invisible barriers. Almost a decade and a half passed since the publishing of this Newsweek issue and rereading it today casts a shadow on ambitions defined by a measuring stick of the past. The pandemic and the suffering it caused underline just how fragile, disadvantaged and vulnerable groups, professional and personal lives have been shaped by this new normal. It has created a scenario in which we can easily fall back into domestic and professional roles and distribution of tasks that we considered bygone arrangements years or even decades ago. The magnitude of the crisis we're still living through makes us starkly aware of persistent injustices and the vulnerability of the one precious life we have. Children with a yet unblemished fantasy play roles that envision future selves. This elusive life suspended in time is a moment when all the pieces fit perfectly together. In such an intangible moment and as a child, I was an emigrant, but I didn't know or care, blissfully ignorant, how I would earn my living residing on a different continent as an immigrant. It was a child's daydream, out of focus, a self-portrait so incomplete it still had a lot of negative space and no name to it. Since childhood, we may have imagined intangible professional lives as creatives, and when starting your program at Moore, you committed yourself to a particular pursuit. Quoting from Charles Dickens' Great Expectations, you are called to a vocation because it expresses your essence, who you are, end quote. Our lives are singular, yet we have a myriad of choices. No one else has your memory, your story, or your potential. All are uniquely yours. Your belief in your passion and love for engaging with the arts, the freedom and conviction to do so provided energy for struggle and long nights of work. You followed your impulses and calling to pursue a creative career because of the quintessence of who you are. Learning a vocation is fundamentally formative. Swept up in our real lives, we have to compromise being confronted with limitations that may wreak havoc with becoming what we deeply want or dream of achieving, however blurry this vision is. Achilles in the Iliad could choose between two specific fates that were outlined and predicted by the gods. Either fight and die at Troy 
or live a long life that is utterly uneventful. Our lives are shaped by decision makings that we know have consequences for how our lives unfold. As Jean-Paul Sartre said on imaginary lives, we quote, draw our own portrait outside of which there is nothing and that dreams, expectations and hopes only serve to define a person as a broken dream, aborted hopes and futile expectations, end quote. He felt that reality alone counts. Contrary to this, and in my mind, there is negative space in any portrait, sufficient so to fill it one small piece at a time. Each small piece defines a shift in your career, a move across the country or continents, a supportive mentor, or an important encounter with a professional or a friend. In short, a maturation and expansion of our life and vocation. Young careers are vague and blurry and offer numerous what ifs, shaped by the skills of the future. The Newsweek issue from 2007 features women and how they overcame obstacles in their professional path. Amy Gottman, president of the University of Pennsylvania, pointed out that she had, quote, terrific male and female mentors, some of whom surprised me by taking an interest in me and my work, end quote. In your life, you encounter numerous mentors, links in a chain that help you move along. Perhaps we envy those who are ahead. The envy becomes a motivator for achievements you may dream of. Your role model succeeded in their unique path in life and work. It appears the negative space of their portrait may have diminished, yet it's still part of it all. We're not born with all the skills we need, but acquire them one by one. No life can be copied. Yours is unique and you will find your distinct fashion of living your life and shaping a career full of potential, exploring new directions. And as future leaders, you will have to pave the way to a more diverse, inclusive, tolerant, and humane working environment. As a professional and as an educator, we as creatives cannot escape being attached to ourselves and pasts not lift, become irreversible. Our lives refuse to stand still. Your professional life is inescapable and will be shaped by the choices you make and opportunities that present themselves. While a century ago, plural possibilities of exercising a profession simmered down to one very quickly, you may find yourself moving in and around in multiple professions in the future. Listen closely to your inner voice and take it seriously. Throughout the career, you will make numerous adjustments and with age, your agencies, your thinking and your perception of personal importance mature and change. It is only natural that what we are preoccupied with needs to remain flexible and adjustable as we go. A major benefit of a creative career is the ability to be creative in designing it. Art by its nature is an affair of choosing among endless possibilities. Making decisions is very much part of being a creative. If one more change would make it worse, we consider a work as completed. Similarly, art in its nature is also very much a matter of failing and rejection. Both admittedly are hard to accept, yet both are key to an artist's advancement. Keep in mind, creations are the focal point of rejections, not you as a person. A creative process is one of many iterations and nothing is ever completely finished. We as people and the work we do are works in progress. At all times, give yourself another chance. Be positive about moving on and don't waste time on negative thoughts. Just keep going. 
your professional life may have just started. And it started well with you graduating on this exciting day of your life from a truly wonderful institution, despite the difficult times and circumstances. Tragically, the pandemic caused too many lives lost, each unique and important. Colleagues who contributed in vital and important ways to the advancement of the arts, sciences, and communities at large. As an emerging member of the arts community, honor the lives lost and help shape a world that is to become more inclusive, tolerant, and equitable for all human beings. Find inspiration in simplicity and scale back. Most importantly, make a difference by being kind to yourself, generous to others, and protective of our habitat. Gradually, with patience, and by letting your envisioned self linger as you fill in the negative space in your self-portrait, it will become one with an end to it. Avoid comparing its progress to others and look ahead to make the one life you have your own. Congratulations to all of you and thank you very much. Thank you, Sabil. Wonderful, wonderful words. And welcome to the Moore family. And now we, we will introduce the messages from our chairs of the Board of Trustees and Boards of Managers, Francis Graham, graduate 1966, and Arthur Block. Good morning and congratulations to the class of 2021 on this wonderfully exciting day. As a Moore alumna myself, I'm so proud to join you for your commencement ceremony as you take the next steps in your lives as Moore artists and designers. I've watched in admiration the way that the college has transformed and progressed over time. While so much has changed since my days as a student, the core values of Moore, to educate historically underserved populations with empathy and tenacity remains constant. Each generation of students brings so much to the community, challenging prior ways of creating, learning, and relating to each other by asking how we can continue to grow to get together. The hard work you have done here is not limited to your classrooms and studios. Each one of you has left your imprint on this institution's foundation. Whether you stay nearby or travel far, the Moore community will always be here to support you on your journey as you have enriched the community during your time here. Good morning. I would like to take a moment to reiterate a key theme in my colleagues' friends' remarks, community. The Moore community is robust and active. Moore is made up of an incredible faculty and dedicated staff. We boast a highly, we boast, boast a highly involved group of gracious alumni who continue to support their alma mater in countless ways. Perhaps most importantly though, our community relies on the students and their support systems of family and friends whose guidance has led them to this point today. We are able to gather remotely today to celebrate the tremendous accomplishments of the class of 2021. This gathering is a testament to the strength of this community of which I am honored to be a part. To the class of 2021, congratulations on your tremendous accomplishments. When you succeed, your community succeeds. Thank you for giving all of us so much to be proud of. Thank you so much, Art and Fran. Uh, we indeed are so very, very proud of the class of 2021. I would now like to invite Chief Academic Officer Patricia Phillips to speak. Dean Phillips is a noted scholar and continues to model a collaborative spirit, respectful, 
collegiality, and an unwavering commitment to high standards. We are delighted to have Patty make some remarks. Dean Phillips. Thank you, President Fitzgibbon. Um, before I start my brief remarks, I wanna just, I feel very odd sitting with my back to a piece of art, uh, some art that I absolutely love and inspires me each and every day. It's by the Chilean political artist named Alfredo Yar. It's an independent work, but it also became a very large wall installation. Um, it was inspired by uh, an essay I wrote in Art Forum about his work entitled The Body Maps the World. So I wanted to honor um, Alfredo's work and <laughs> tell you that I don't generally sit with my back to it. It inspires me every day. I love the work of the poet Mary Oliver. And she wrote in the poem, The Summer Day, tell me what it is you plan to do with your one wild and precious life. Good way to start each day too. Here we are together. The significant passage, your graduation from Moore College of Art and Design, it once felt so distant. And in this remarkable year, it might at times have felt almost impossible. But here it is so strikingly and vividly and authentically. We're all here together, we have arrived. You did it, you made it. What an accomplishment, what a triumph. Here this morning is a vibrant community of undergraduate and graduate students who are fiercely committed to their creative work and who are generous with each other, take genuine pleasure in each other's success and support each other in challenging moments of doubt and uncertainty that are the prerequisites of authentic creativity and agency. Quite simply, it is an extraordinary gift that I have enjoyed and benefited from to work with and around the students of Moore who love the work and the challenging enterprise of independent thought and action. So greetings to the class of 2021, the extraordinary class of 2021 and families and friends of our graduates gathered here and there, but together. We may be far flung, but the foundation of our creative community is one of coalition and solidarity. Our graduates, Bachelor of Fine Arts, Master of Arts, Master of Fine Arts degree students. And of course, warm greetings to our extended Moore family, continuing students, full-time and part-time faculty, professional staff, administration, board members, alumni, and many other members of our community who keep the college active, accountable, vital, safe, and generative for many different individuals. And the past year has been especially notable time of academic response and innovation, care and attention to our students and for each other. The college's mission of academic excellence prevailed in spite of countless obstacles, challenges, and unknowns. Again, poet Oliver ruminates in her poem, The Summer Day, on planning, agency, and initiative. What are you going to do with this one precious life? What is it that you plan to do? How do we go beyond our comfort zones? How do we allow curiosity and passion to activate and guide us? How do we push through fear? And, there, and here are other questions recently raised by an eminent visual and conceptual artist. What should we do? What is this time for? Of course, she's talking about the moment that we're in. These concise and eloquent questions are asked by artist Lorraine O'Grady, who at age 86 is having her first major retrospective exhibition entitled Both and at the Brooklyn Museum. Surely evidence that success often requires both dedicated and persistent work, as well as extreme patience. She describes herself as a both and rather than an either or thinker. So we might expect that there are different answers and angles to imagine and adjudicate all of the time. 
She avoids singularity and embraces complexity and contradiction. Also a concept, an idea that was made very relevant by um, Philadelphia-based architects Denise Scott Brown and Robert Venturi. And we will return to these queries and others as we all help to create our future together. We have experienced during the passage and behavior of a global pandemic an abundance, and I dare say a creative surplus of questions. And as we all know, questions are our life force and our conceptual accelerants as artists, designers, writers, performers and creatives. What should we do? What is this time for? The speculative fiction writer Ursula Le Guin writes or wrote, no darkness lasts forever ever. And even there, there are stars. The magnificent, adaptive, brave, and resilient class of 2021 are no longer students, but not quite yet alumni. You will be in remembered as the intrepid individuals who prevailed in spite of uncertainty and often deferral and disappointment to discover a light and many lights to guide you through this treacherous and difficult time. In some respects, this passage from Le Guin captures what you have experienced and emboldens and encourages you for what lies ahead. For you have become more nimble and adaptive to what is unknown and uncharted. It has been a bit crazy at times, but what a preparation for a creative life of commitment and agency. And as Le Guin also wrote, there are stars. You, the class of 2021, are our stars. Each one of you, a unique point of light of radiant luminosity, points of illumination that guide us and whose presence radiates hope for the future. You will be the future visionaries in fields and disciplines and industries and all kinds of spaces you will work in and change. And in some cases, those brave trailblazers who helped to create new fields and areas of creativity and invention. One thing is certain, in the future, some of you who graduate today will be working in ways and in fields that have not yet been imagined. Part of a more education is preparing you for what we may know and expect, but it also is about developing, defining resources and sensitivities to navigate the unknown. And then as artists, designers, creatives, and sentient human beings to vividly communicate its meaning and significance to us. I don't really know quite why, I guess I'm just thinking about our earth and what we share together, but I, I was recently thinking about the Apollo 8 astronauts who in December 1968 were the first to see from their little spacecraft um, and then photograph for all of us from outer space, the magnificent sphere of the earth as it was rising over the moon and then pass this vivid image back to us to ponder as we still do today. From 250,000 miles away, this iconic image of the earth now called earth rise has become a striking symbol of how we think about and respond to our imperiled environments. This image of planet Earth has helped to launch an environmental movement that acknowledges our limitations and also summons a purposeful and expansive response. Yes, the Earth has been imperiled by human actions, yet it also can be healed through concentrated and coordinated vision and action. Now back to the Earth that we share together. Um, I often think of the 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 life and work of Molly and John Chester, the improbable novice farmers and filmmakers and small cast of the wonderful film, The Biggest Little Farm, that presents um, endless discouraging setbacks and failures, trial and error, but ultimately their incredible achievement to create a vibrant, sustainable, biodiversity on a once desolate and abandoned and ruined 200 acre farm outside of Los Angeles. 
be attentive to the world and the potentialities around you. Practice curiosity, engage in observation, expand creativity, leverage opportunity, exercise compassion, be forgiven. And this is the one, this is the lesson that the Chesters learned. Think about this as well. Observation followed by creativity is our greatest ally. I just love that. Just inspires me every day. We look forward to the unimaginable ways that the artists and designers, the thinkers and the theorists, the inventors and the speculators, and not quite more alum here today, how you will continue to emanate your fiercely intelligent embrace of curiosity and creativity that are the catalysts of change throughout the world that we share and shape together. And as you learned and experienced, this will require extreme attention and focus, expansive intelligence and curiosity, a speculative inclination and acute ethical understandings. Congratulations and good wishes. Thank you for the countless impressions you leave with us. The remarkable resilience and choreography of your community and especially in the past year for your fine work and with our incredibly accomplished and dedicated faculty and other, and other more colleagues, your compassionate and consequential stewardship. You two are our stewards, students, soon alumni of the college's bold and bright educational mission. I conclude with a brief quote from the great leader, Nelson Mandela. May your choices always reflect your hopes and not your fears. Thank you. It's now my pleasure to invite President Fitzgibbon back to speak. <laughs> And Dean Phillips, if we were on the stage, I would stand behind you and deliver these words. In the closing year of your esteemed career, we wanted to honor your contribution to this college and to recognize you, excuse me, <laughs> and to recognize your extensive uh, contributions to the world of art criticism and higher education. We also wanted to acknowledge your extraordinary generosity and sense of civic duty and to publicly enfold you in the Moore family forever. You are a dedicated teacher, a serious scholar, a valued colleague, a selfless mentor, an acute administrator, and a remarkable strategist. I am inspired by all that you do and give. More College of Art and Design will be better and changed in immeasurable ways because of your leadership. As a member of the academic community, one of the highest honors is to be recognized by an institution devoted to higher learning. Therefore, today with the class of 2021 and witnessed by your family and close friends who you cannot see, <laughs> who are participating in the audience, and by virtue of the authority delegated to me, I hereby confer upon you, Patricia Phillips, the Doctor of Letters, honoris causa for excellence in the arts, and declare that your name is to be forever on the college's roll of honorary members. Congratulations, it is well, well deserved. I'm very 
very honored and, and very, very touched. And um, I have been the recipient of such an incredible experience here at Moore the past five years. I, I um, so I'm, I'm filled with gratitude for so many reasons. Thank you so, so much. Shall we confer the degrees, Dean Phillips? I forgot the agenda here, sorry. <laughs> Um, thank you, thank you. First, the candidates for the degree of Master of Fine Arts, Madam President, in the judgment of the faculty of Moore College of Art and Design, the individuals before us have met all of the requirements for the Master of Fine Arts degree. By virtue of the authority delegated to me and with the highest hopes for your future. I hereby confer upon each of you the Master of Fine Arts degree for which your studies have qualified you. Congratulations. The members of the Master of Fine Arts class of 2021 will now receive their virtual diplomas. I invite Graduate Program Director Daniel Tucker to announce the candidates. The candidates? for the degree of Master of Fine Arts in Socially Engaged Studio Art are Emily Elizabeth Elliott, Kiera Riley, Antoinette Siriani. <laughs> Dean Phillips will now return to speak. Next, we have the candidates for the degree of Master of Arts. Madam President, in the judgment of the faculty of Moore College of Art and Design, the individuals before us have met all of the requirements for the Master of Arts degree. By virtue of the authority delegated to me and with the highest hopes for your future, I hereby confer upon each of you the Master's of Arts degree for which your studies have qualified you. The members of the Master of Arts class of 2021 will now receive their virtual diploma. I inv invite Graduate Program Director Daniel Tucker to announce the candidate. The candidates for the degree of Master of Arts in Socially Engaged Art are Claire Aidy, Megan Elizabeth Gallardi. <laughs> Dean Phillips will now return to speak. Thank you, Daniel. And finally, the candidates for the degree of Bachelor of Fine Arts. Madam President, in the judgment of the faculty of Moore College of Art and Design, the seniors before us have met all the requirements for the baccalaureate degree. By virtue of the authority delegated to me and with the highest hopes for your future, I hereby confer upon each of you the respective bachelor's degrees for which your studies have qualified you. The members of the class of 2021 will now receive their digital diplomas. I invite the departmental chairpersons to announce the candidates. Candidates for the degree of Bachelor of Fine Arts in Animation and Game Arts are Noelle Banawowski, Abigail Brickner, Madison Diaz, Aria Flynn, Deja Hankerson, Kayla Bryce He, Laura Elizabeth Howard, magna cum laude, Faith Hoisted with a minor in business. Kira Hughes with a minor in creative writing. 
Greta Elizabeth Mater Cum Laude with a minor in photography and digital arts. Jennifer T. Murray Cum Laude. Olivia Page Puvacek. Zoe Rickman. Deneen Sargent. Cassandra S. Silverman, magna cum laude. Kellen Wardwell. Aaron Williams. Lauren Stichter will now announce the art education candidates. The candidates for the degree of Bachelor of Fine Arts in Art Education are Kendall Alyssa Boyd, magna cum laude. Sarah Suarez, cum laude. I now invite Kelly Kirby to announce the art history and curatorial studies candidates. The candidate for the degree of Bachelor of Fine Arts in Art History is Lucy Allen, summa cum laude, with a, fine art, with a minor in fine arts. The candidate for the degree of Bachelor of Fine Arts in Curatorial Studies is Courtney C. Warren, cum laude, with a minor in textile design. And now Nacelli Ortiz will announce the fashion design candidates. I would like to acknowledge the first indigenous inhabitants of the Philadelphia area, the Lenny Lenape tribe. The, doc, the, the candidates for the degree of bachelors of fine arts in fashion designs are Anaya Quinn Holmes, Nina Bonaducci, Heather Shaw, Vivian Maestrado, Casey Quinn. Jinghee Ju. Wood will now announce the fine arts candidates. Candidates for the degree of Bachelor of Fine Arts in Fine Arts are Cassidy Argo, summa cum laude. Liana Bacani, magna cum laude. Takia Gibbs, cum laude. Finna Grimes, magna cum laude with a minor in textile design. Ayla Knight. Emily O'Day. Alexandra Piper with a minor in textile design. Marley Richardson. Jennifer Schneck, magna cum laude with a minor in business. Sarah E. Swartz, cum laude with a minor in business. Sophia Manning Tezalur, cum laude, with a minor in business. <laughs> Catherine Detier will now announce the graphic design, illustration, and interior design candidates. The candidates for the degree of Bachelor of Fine Arts in graphic design are Cal P. 
Gracie, summa cum laude. Krista Ann Foss, summa cum laude, with a minor in business. Wilder Francone. Brooke Friend. Kyla Cora Irizari. Sarah Rose Johnson. Giovanna Jones. April Maddox. Julia Rose Perrick. Oksana Perez with a minor in illustration. Madison Jade Phillips with a minor in business. Chelsea B. Plummer. The candidates for the degree of Bachelor of Fine Arts and Illustration are Taylor Taylor D. Geither with a minor in animation and game arts. Mary Acree with a minor in fine arts. Allison Christensen. Sanjane Zaire Coleman. Emily Taylor Conklin. Emily Fabiano. K. Fox, cum laude. Laura Ann Hodes with a minor in business. Amanda Maria Holmes. Deborah Rose Jacoby. Rebecca Krauss. Magna Cum Laude with minors in fine arts and business. Jax Levesque. Jude Mertens, Summa Cum Laude. Natalie Victoria Rosbodowski with a minor in business. Kara Rusk, magna cum laude. Amanda Tonkery with a minor in animation and game arts. The candidates for the degree of Bachelor of Fine Arts in Interior Design are J. 
Justina Ekpali. Adelamar Sedano Laboy. Anna Burnell Shafee, summa cum laude. Nikita Bharat Kumar, contractor. Victoria Pearl Cross. Haley Deaver. Samantha Fink. Shante Elena Howard, magna cum laude. Sophia Lee, summa cum laude. Adrian O'Neill. Eleni Palamidis, cum laude. Devon Palmer Dima. Shelby Robbins, magna cum laude. And now Stephen Wood will announce the photography and digital arts candidates. Candidates for the degree of Bachelor of Fine Arts in Photography and Digital Arts are Joshua Archer. Natalie Clacy. Corey Fitzpatrick with a minor in graphic design. Amanda Elizabeth Nigo, magna cum laude. Cassandra Nickerson with a minor in graphic design. Tatiana Olivares. Michaela Ramirez Faisca. Via Christina Waterfield. Cheyenne A. Yell. <laughs> President Fitzgibbon will now give the closing remarks. Well, I think you, we should give you another round of applause and I can, I'll be able to hear you from your computer screen. Turn around hug the people that you love, give yourselves a pat on the back. Class of 2021, you may now raise your roses high in the air 
you have officially, officially graduated from Moore College of Art and Design. Congratulations. <laughs> We are so proud of you and your accomplishments. And we can't wait to see what you do next and the impact you have and make on the world. Congratulations, class of 2021. You are now graduates of Moore College of Art and Design. Well done. Yeah.